Okay, imagine the following situation. You are at home, it's winter outside, it's the beginning of winter, and it's starting to get cold inside again, also. And you look around and you find out that your heating system just broke. What should you do? Tomorrow you have an invitation for the whole family. And the family will come and celebrate at your house and you don't want them to freeze, of course. Yeah. So you call the company which installed the heating system and ask for a technician and very soon because the problem yeah, is there and you want to fi have it fixed now. Yeah. So after two hours, you are lucky. The technician stands at your doorstep. He has silvery grayish hair and starts working right away and after a while he finds the problem. A burnt fuse, he switches the fuse and the heating system works again and you are relieved. Yeah? You are happy, you can celebrate with your family. But then after two weeks, the heating system breaks again and you are devastated. You call the company again and you want to have it fixed again. And this time you ask for a more mature senior person. And of course, they don't wait for you, the seniors, right? So you have to wait for one hour or two, uh, for one day or two. And the technician arrives. And this time it's a young guy, good looking, around 30 years old. Is this the technician, you ask yourself? The experienced, the senior technician? So... He starts working right away. He connects his PC, runs a few scripts, and after a while he finds the problem. The burn fuse again, but this time uh, he finds that a sensor is corroded because of a leak in the heating system. Uh, so he repairs the whole system. He repairs the leak and switches the sensor and the, the burn fuse. And the heating system works again, and this time for good. So, what's the learning? What's the learning of this story? Hi, I'm David, and I'm Scrum Master and HR Coach at MIC. And today I want to talk with you about software engineering career paths and about maturity and how to become a senior software engineer. But who are we? Yeah? Who is MSE? And why MSE? So we are about 500 to 600 employees. We have offices in on three different continents. And our vision is that we run the best cloud platform for customs and trade compliance. And if you want to find out more, please visit us. Here's the link. Um, I would be happy to see you there if you want to learn more about us. But to understand more about the different roles we have and how to become a software engineer, I want to know, I want you to know, to understand the complexity of our product. Huh? So this is a, a graphic about the different customers we have. And you see there are a lot of logos you might know. Huh? And these are international global playing customers. Huh? And they use our software to produce and ship goods internationally across borders. And we enable them to manage their international customs trade and customs filings, huh? which is quite complex. Huh? So I bring to you also the tech radar. You might already have seen um, with the talk of Wolfgang, where he goes into detail of the tech, tech radar. And this time I don't want to go into detail. Don't be afraid. Um, it should just give you an overview about the different languages, frameworks, techniques, platforms, and tools our software developers has, have to use day in and day out. Huh? And it's an ever-increasing complexity which we have to deal as software engineers in our product and in our daily job. Uh, and it's not about only about us, it's also about 
the software IT industry and the software development industry, which is an ever increasing complexity and it's more and more challenging. So my question for you today is, how do you develop yourself? How do you adjust to this complexity and how do you become a senior software engineer in your field? Huh? Because normally it looks like that. Huh? You start at a software engineering company, you start to develop huh, and be a software engineer and you learn the domain knowledge, you learn to understand the product, the architecture, to use the tools, the right tools. And then after five years or so, you go to your manager and you say, hey, I'm now mature, I'm now a senior, I want the race. Huh? That's the standard way which happens at many, many different companies. But what's the problem? Huh? What's the difference between this thing and the technician from before with the silver gray hair? If you do something for 30 years huh? and you do it day in and day out the same way and you don't adjust with your skills and your tools to the change of the industry, you don't grow, you don't get mature, right? So my question to you is really, how do you develop yourself from a software engineer to a senior software engineer? And that's a quite complex and challenging question and we put a lot of effort in that to answer that question. So today I want to show you our approach and maybe you can learn something from that for your daily life and for your development. This is a graphic about our software engineering career paths. And you see it's a field between operational and strategic tasks and of focus on the lead side or on the technical excellence. And it's not a hierarchical diagram. There are no hierarchies in there. Um, but it shows your development. Yeah? And you can start as a software engineer or as a junior software engineer at MIC. Of course, you can also start as a senior or, a lead, or as a lead. But normally, people start as software engineers or junior software engineers and they develop their skills. And then from software engineer, you have two options. Yeah? You can either become a senior software engineer and focus on technical excellence and develop your technical skills. Or you can, on the other side, focus on being a lead software engineer and being a real technical lead for the team. And as a lead software engineer, you are responsible for creating a viable team. Yeah? And from both of these roles, you can also develop in a third level, which is a principal software engineer which is the most mature and most senior role at MIC. So what's the difference? Huh? I talked about creating a system which helps you grow. Huh? And that's one part, but another part is what the people focus on and how they train or build their skills, right? And this slide um, shows you what people tend to focus on and how they spend their time. And as a software engineer or a junior software engineer, you focus on developing features and delivering value to our customers. That's one part. Yeah? So developing, bug fixing, understanding user needs, understanding user requirements, um, writing automated tests. That's the one part. And another big portion of your time should be spent uh, is spent in learning and in training on the job and understanding and growing as a software engineer. And to help you with this grow, we have the two other roles, the senior software engineering role and the lead software engineer role. And as a senior software engineer, you also focus on de delivering value to our customers, of course, but you also focus on coaching and mentoring others and being a great role model, yeah? introducing technical excellence and also focusing on creating the right environment, focusing on the system architecture, of, on the system design, and using the right tools and striving for technical excellence. 
As a lead software engineer, I also teased that did this already. Yeah? As a lead software engineer, you focus on also delivering value to our customers, but you focus on creating a viable team and helping others to grow. You are a technical lead. You are not a boss or a manager of the team, but a technical lead. And you create and foster the right environment where people can grow and strive for being more and being more experienced. And the principal software engineer, that's the most mature role, is also an expert in on technical excellence, uh, but also focusing on scaling up the knowledge. Uh, a principal software engineer is a great change manager. He can introduce new techniques and new tools to multiple teams uh, across departments, across different teams. And he shapes the tech strategy for the whole company, which the team, of course, implement and develop. Yeah? That's the second part of the system. Yeah? And the third part of the system is that we have a better understanding, a detailed understanding of the different roles and the different skills. We created the skill spider web, we call it skill spider web, and it consists of 27 core skills a software engineer should bring and should build. Yeah? And you see the different maturity roles in there. And that's not so important. Yeah, the details are not so important. But the important thing is that you understand your role, you understand the skills you need, and you can build the skills. Yeah? Like the technician, the younger technician, who had the right tools and the right skills to solve the problem properly. And to do that, we give each other feedback in 180 degree feedback processes. And that's a ever repeating process where we give each other feedback and detailed feedback. So for example, one colleague might, might identify that he wants to focus more on test driven development. And we find measures and come up with a plan to help the person to improve the skills in this part. Yeah? So what's in for you? What are we doing to grow? Yeah? We help you to grow and we give you opportunities to grow. We have a detailed understanding of the different roles we have yeah, and we need, and we give each other regular feedback, detailed regular feedback. Then we have a system around this, this uh, smaller system, which is the MIC Academy, where you get the right trainings for you. You can go to conferences and you get the right content you need to grow. And we help each other to grow. We have mentoring, we have coaching of more senior persons that's in their job description. They don't focus only on developing, they focus also on you to help you grow. And Thereby, we constantly build our experience and our skills. And this will help us and will help you to adjust to this ever-increasing complexity of products and of our industry. So, the one key takeaway I want you to take with you to today is that you need to have a feedback process and have a detailed look at your skills and you need a plan to develop your skills. You need to know where you want to go. So you need an understanding of what it means to be a more senior person. We put a lot of effort in that. So if you want to check it out, how we do it, please visit our career site. Here's the link. I would be happy to see you there and I also would be happy to see you in person soon. Thanks. Thanks for your attention.